Good evening and welcome to Let's Play Swordbreaker. This is a blind playthrough. Uh, the devs contacted me, asked me if I'd be interested in playing this. Ooh, long ago, somewhere in a parallel dimension, there lived the young adventurer. And it looks really awesome to me. Story-driven game. Cool art style. So let's see what we got here. His name was... Well, we don't know for sure what his name was. As he had only a nickname. The Swordbreaker. Once he was sitting in a tavern, squandering his last money on beer, and he saw two men quarreling at the next table. One of them stood up, smashed a bottle against the table, and hit the other one with the fragment of the bottle. After that, he rushed out of the tavern. Yikes. The adventurer came up to the dying man. The man grabbed the hero's clothes in agony and handed a bundle to him. After that, he passed away. What was in this mystery bundle? After the hero stayed alone in a rented room, he unrolled the bundle and saw that it was an old map with a castle on it. The adventurer became animated because he needed money very much. The next day, he started on a journey. This was the beginning of a great adventure full of dangers and encounters. Alright, X marks the spot. Yeah, let's go see what this castle is all about. Ooh, there we go. That first part was fairly quiet. Now we've got some volume. Okay. Let's get... Castle map. I'm curious. 324 scenes. That That's a lot of scenes. Oh my goodness. It's huge. Oh yeah. Alright. Cool. Uh, let's see. How do I... Get back. Ah, escape did the trick. Okay. And there shouldn't be anything in the gallery because I've not played it before. Okay. Oh. So, all sorts. Is this going to be the same as the scenes? The number. Ooh, and bonus ones down here. Nice. Okay. There's nothing to continue, so a new game. Let's get in here. Okay. Choose your path. Press to open menu and watch your progress. Read the story. To watch full page. After a long and tiring journey, the hero approached a huge ancient castle. From the look of it, the castle had been abandoned many centuries ago, but something gave him the mysterious feeling he wasn't alone. The adventurer saw an open window on the second floor. Which way to go? Walk through the gates or climb in through the window? Well, we should probably just go through the gate because that's a lot less complicated, but I think I want to go through the window. Window! It took the hero a lot of effort to climb up to the second floor in his armor. Now he was in a guard room just above the castle gates. It looked like there had been a fight here. Dead warriors, or rather their skeletons, were scattered on the floor. Suddenly, yeah, this one looks like it's coming back from the dead. One of the skeletons moved and tried to stand up, raising his longsword. Make a choice now. Should the adventurer take a running kick at him while the warrior's still on the floor, jump out of the window, or wait until he gets up and take it like a man? <laughs> jump out the window. I'm out of here. Um... We could be honorable, but no, we're going to kick this thing before it gets up. Bam! The hero didn't wait for the enemy to get up and took a running kick at the frail skeleton. The bones crunched and smashed into smithereens, and his sword fell on the floor. Should the adventurer take the sword or walk to the door? Take the sword and then walk to the door. I wonder, was it necessarily an evil skeleton? Maybe it would have talked to us if we hadn't kicked it. Oh, too late now. The adventurer entered the barracks unabashed. Now that he had two swords, the hero was ready for any battle. Yeah! Okay. Oh, and here's our full picture. I am enjoying this art style with the heavy shadows and everything. Quite nice. Oh! There were broken beds, chairs, and other pieces of furniture scattered around the barracks. Then he saw four skeleton guards with their swords at the ready. What should he do? Oh, oh, this way. 
Throw the skeleton sword at them and finish them with his own. Fight with two swords. Yeah, we're dual wielding. Do it. The hero decided to fight with both swords. Because if we throw one, what if we need it, you know? At the right moment, the adventurer made his way between the two guards and cut them in half before they could do anything. Flawless victory. Oh, yeah. Took this side right out. Okay, but we still got this fella over here. Oh, we did it. The armory. It was a big chamber with weapon racks and armor stands along the walls. Apart from the bows, swords, and shields put in order, the armory was a sorry sight with huge holes in the floor. Oh, watch your step. Then the adventurer saw two doors. And I'm scrolling the wrong way. There we go. One at the far end of the room, one on the right. Should the hero open the door on the right, the one at the other end, or go and take a look at the weapons? I'm a little concerned that if we look at the weapons or go to the far door, we're going to fall through this forward floor. Because it is saying it's a, it's a sorry sight and there's holes. What if we find like a super... I mean, we've got two swords. Do we really need another weapon right now? We could get a good armor piece. I mean, mm, I'm going to chicken out and be safe this time. We're just going to scoot through this door on the right. I, I'm just worried that we're going to plummet through the floor if we do one of the other options. So, number two. Oh! <gasps> So the adventurer chose the door on the right and pulled the handle. Little did he know that behind that door was a closet full of weapons. As soon as he opened it, all the swords and axes started falling out on the hero's head, crushing him to the floor. Did we just die? It looks an awful lot like we just died. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> don't go that way. Well, in this case, then, we might as well check out the Rex. The hero was so absorbed in the weapons, he didn't hear the floorboards creaking under his weight, and before he knew it, the floor collapsed. Uh-huh. The adventurer woke up on a pile of hay with his hands smeared in someone's poop. What a stench. This place badly needs a cleaning. Somewhere in the corner, there was a vicious boar looking for something in a bowl full of blood and bones. Would it be better to sneak through the waste chute or attack the boar? Do we still have both of our swords? Because a boar would be... You know, look at this thing. Look at these tusks. It's gonna mess us up if we tangle with it. But do we really want to be cowardly and just sneak away through the waste chute? We already have our, our hand full of poop. You know, we're covered in the ick regardless. Alright, this might end up killing us, but take that pig out. The adventurer decided to kill the boar, but how? Should he sneak up on the beast and slit his throat, or whistle to the pig? Stealthy. The hero thought it would be better to kill the boar quietly and sneaked up behind him. But animals can hear really well, so when the adventurer was close enough, the beast gave him a, gave him a bad kick in the nuts. When the hero fell and doubled over with pain, the boar sank his tusks into his neck. Okay, stealth was not the way to go. Let's see our picture here. <laughs> this middle panel, I love it. Ooh. Yep, that boar god is good. Okay, so, um, we'll whistle to it. Sneaking up would be a dirty trick, thought the hero. Also, as we learned, it fails. Hey, you pig, he called. The boar turned around, and his eyes filled with blood. It was a huge, scary beast, with long tusks sticking out of his mouth. The next second, it dashed at the hero. Should the adventurer retreat or dodge the attack? Ah, uh, dive for it. The adventurer jumped out of the way, and the boar ran right past him. Should the hero dash to the pig and chop his head off, or let him come closer first? But if we run up to him, we're kind of committed. I mean, what if he dodges us and then turns around and gores us or something? Let's we'll show a little bit of patience. Lure him in. The adventurer thought he should wait. When the boar took a running jump at the hero, he dodged the attack and plunged his sword breaker with his left hand, killing the boar. Now the adventurer could go on. He entered the door and found himself in a storeroom at the entrance to the carpentry shop. It was really dirty, with piles of sawdust in the corners and a door leading to the workshop. Should the adventurer get some rest on the sawdust or move on? Well, if the pig was eating out of a bowl of blood and bones, then someone feeds it, right? So if we sleep in the sawdust, whoever cares for the pig could potentially come down here and catch us while we're sleeping. And I don't think we want that. So let's press on. 
Plus, we were just unconscious for a bit, right? When we fell through the floor and stuff. So, we got our rest. The adventurer entered a carpentry shop full of half-finished bows, arrows, and spades. In the corners, he saw tables and woodworking machines. A strong smell of wood was in the air. In the center, there was a table saw with a sign saying, Out of order! Should the hero try and find out how it works, or have a better look around? <laughs> what, what are we going to use the table saw for? Okay, there's there's no reason that we should even want to use the table saw, but because it's an option, let's use the table saw. The adventurer went around the table, touched the saw, looked in all the holes before he finally noticed a button on the side. Without thinking twice, he pushed the button, and the saw went spinning wildly. The next second, it creaked and whooshed right into the hero's face. Sawed! Now, I noticed we had three hearts, and now we're down to none, so do I restart from the beginning? Yep. You're dead! And I was human, huh? Okay, so if I continue, where do I continue from? The beginning, eh? Okay. Alright, well we went through the window last time. Let's go through the gates. The hero found himself in the castle courtyard. It was in ruins and desolation. Everything was covered with a thick layer of dust. Among the clutter on the floor, the hero noticed a manhole leading to the sewers. Hmm, there was also a door nearby. What's your choice? Let's venture into the depths. I mean, we still have a whole ton of castle to look through, but... What's down through this tantalizing manhole? Ugh, what a stench. The hero climbed down the ladder and found himself at the bottom of the sewers full of rats, bones, and dirty pools. On the wall, he noticed some weird-looking mushrooms glowing in the dark. Eat them. Should the adventurer go on down the tunnel, eat a mushroom, <laughs> or rummage in the pile of bones? Eat a mushroom. We're not going to eat a mushroom. It's a very obviously terrible idea. But let's look at these bones. The adventurer started rummaging through the old bones and found a gold ring. Yeah, that was a lucky find. But should the hero take a bone from the pile as well? Why? To use... As a weapon? What, what would we do with it? Do I take it just to see what happens? I think I do. I think it's a bad idea, but... The adventurer took both the ring and a bone and went down the sewer tunnel. Soon he approached the main sewer, with a dog kennel on the right and an old toothless hellhound lying on the floor. The dog gave the hero a vicious look. What should he do now? Well, give him the bone! Here you go, buddy. <laughs> nope. The adventurer threw the bone to the three-headed dog and thought it was time to take off. But the hellhound had no teeth to gnaw on the bone with, and he attacked the hero, crushing him to the ground. <laughs> Cracking of his own ribs was the last sound the adventurer heard. I th oh man. I thought giving him the bone would be the trick. All right. Well, we can't really sneak past it. It sees us. So, oh, I feel kind of bad killing an old toothless hellhound, but it's us or the hellhound, so... Sorry, boy. The hero took out his sword and attacked the hellhound, but it dodged the attack. The hound had no teeth to bite him and instead jumped at the adventurer. Should he make a dive or attack again? Uh, let's dive out of the way, because we do know this thing has the power to crush us. The hero ducked and cut the dog's tail off while the beast was above him. Aww! The hound turned round and thrust at him again. Should the adventurer kick his middle head or attack the dog with the sword? Well, I think sword's the better plan, right? Like, if you kick at the middle head and it doesn't have teeth to bite your leg, so I guess it can't bite instead. Just sword it. Nope. The attack failed. The hellhound was too deft for the hero's sword. This time, the hound was luckier. He seized the adventurer with his jaws and tore him apart. Man, I thought that's what would happen if I kicked him. Alright. Well, I guess we gotta try to kick the head, right? As soon as the hero kicked the beast in the middle head, the hound fell and started whining. Should he finish the dog or take pity on him? Kill it, because I'm going to take pity on it, and then it's going to take me out. Oh, I'm a fool. As soon as the hero dealt with the hellhound, he went on down the sewers and saw a pack of rats ahead. She cut his way through or run past the rats. I kind of want to just run through, but what if they try to eat me as I do? 
Rush through or run? Uh, we'll rush through. As if in a frenzy, the adventurer slashed his way through the rat pack and finally breathed a sigh of relief. That's when he saw a strange creature ahead. Oh, hey. The hero went on down the sewer tunnel and stumbled on a room with a weird-looking creature inside. This little ugly elf had a key on his belt, the key that can probably unlock the door behind him. Should the adventurer talk to the elf? Well, yeah. How's it going, friend? Who are you? How do I get to the treasury? asked the hero. I'm Stinky, the sewer elf. One of the ways to the treasury is right behind this door. It's locked, but I've got the key, and I can open it for you. If you do something for me, that is. I was walking down these magnificent sewer tunnels one night when I lost my gold ring. I'll let you through the door if you help me find it, said Stinky. So, give Stinky a hand, or kill him and take the key. Well, we have no reason to kill this guy. We're also down to one heart, and I have a feeling if we try, he might just take us right out. And we have the ring. He says he's going to get us to the treasury, so we can get treasure even greater than the ring, right? Give him his ring. The elf took the ring and opened the door for the adventurer. He's so happy here. I think that was a good choice. Provided he hasn't tricked us. The hero went through the door and quickly locked it behind him. In front of him was a low tunnel propped with wooden supports and a signboard which said Uranium Mine. Really? The tunnel diverged, forming three smaller ones. Which tunnel to choose? The left, the one straight ahead, or the one on the right? Yeah, I really have no idea. There's nothing to... We'll go to the right. Oh, boy. The right tunnel led the hero to a vast cave covered with cobwebs with massive cocoons hanging from the ceiling. Go on or cut one of the cocoons open. No, it's, it's going to be spiders inside. But if we go on, then we're going to have to fight spiders, too. All right, let's be foolish. What's inside? Hey! The adventurer carefully opened the cocoon and saw a young guy in work clothes. The hero pulled the survivor out of the cocoon and asked, Who are you and how did you get here? I'm the apprentice to Hans the blacksmith. We forge weapons for the necromancers and build nuclear warheads for the aliens. Oh, well. Hence the uranium mine, eh? Hans sent me to the mine to get some uranium ore, but I took a wrong turn and the spider caught me. Come on, I'll lead you out of here to the smithy, said the apprentice. The adventurer could hardly understand the guy's mumbling, but he had to choose. Uh, okay, we'll go to Hans. Maybe he'll be so grateful to get his apprentice back, he'll give us some kind of special armor or weapon. The long secret passage finally led the hero and the apprentice to the blacksmith. You're here, I don't believe it. I thought you were dead, exclaimed Hans. This brave hero has rescued me from the spider's den, said the apprentice. Really? In that case, you have earned my respect. And a reward. Yes! I can show you the way to our alien allies or send you to the dining hall. So, where do you want to go? What? <laughs> so what, I can go get a meal or I can meet some aliens? Alright, you guys have intrigued me with this uranium mile and nuclear warheads for aliens. Take me to your allies. Hans showed the adventurer the way to the arrivals chamber and the hero went on down the corridors. Uh, yep, it certainly is. That's an alien ship and an alien. The adventurer found himself in a massive hall with a hole in one of the walls. Among some rubble, he saw a large metal disc with shining lights around its surface. There was smoke coming out of the saucer. It had been clearly damaged. Next to it, there was a strange, greenish, big-eyed creature sitting on a rock. It looked very sad. Should the adventurer sneak past the creature or talk to it? Well, it seems like it'd be safe to talk to it, right? Because if it wasn't, then why would Hans have offered to take us here as a reward? So, yeah, let's try talking. The hero decided to talk and went up to the creature. Hi, what's your name? Where do you come from? asked the hero. Greetings, Earthling. I'm Zet, one of the Magicates, a humanoid race. I deliver ammunition for Alien Tech and Interstellar Corporation, AT for short. In case you're not aware, there's war going on between the Interstellar Confederation and the Free Planets Coalition. The Confederation is losing at the moment. We don't have enough weapons. So our corporation has commissioned Hans, the local blacksmith, to supply nuclear rockets for the IC. I've come here to pick up the rockets, but on my way to the castle, something went wrong with the autopilot, and my spaceship crashed into the wall instead of landing in the courtyard. Now the ship is badly damaged. I've sent out an SOS, and will now have to wait for our guys to respond, said the alien. The adventurer could hardly follow Zet. Why am I telling you this? It's as if I tried to explain the corpuscular and wave theory of light to you. A countryman like you won't get it anyway. The only thing you can do for me is clear the debris, said Yset. Should the adventurer help him? Pretend to be really busy, or tell him to get lost. <laughs> Well, let's help him. 
Maybe he'll give us a, a nice reward. Okay, I can help you with that, said the adventurer. So they sat to work together, the alien from one side, the hero from the other. They were almost done when the spaceship suddenly skidded down the rubble towards the adventurer. Should he run for his life or warn Zet? Um, I don't want Zet to get squished. Okay, don't kill me. Oh, we got him. As soon as the hero called Zet, the alien pressed a button on his suit, and the adventurer got teleported into the other end of the room. Thanks for your help. Just give me a shout if you need me, okay, said Zet. Now the hero could go on. All right. The next moment, the hero found himself in a spacious, luxurious room with a magnificent bed next to the wall. This was the chamber of Lord Neo IV himself. The adventurer felt some dark vibes from the place. It was as if someone was watching him. What should he do next? Rummage through the wardrobe for something useful? Or lie down on the bed and take a nap? It's a terrible idea. We are going to sleep on this creepy bed. Bam. Succubus? The adventurer lay down on the magnificent bed and fell asleep. In his dream, he was in a strange place called the Astral World. Once inside, the hero found himself in a spectacular otherworldly room. Suddenly, a beautiful girl appeared before him out of thin air, beckoning him. Should he approach her? No, she's going to be evil. Where's three? I want to call Zet. Ah. Call Zet. Well, no, we're not getting closer to her. Clearly a succubus. She's evil. What's this? <gasps> oh, that's, that's how you call Zet. Yeah! The alien appeared in the middle of the astral room and, without thinking twice, shot succubus with his blaster. The plasma beam hit the demoness in the chest, burning a huge hole through it. The tempstress fell on the floor and began to dissolve. As soon as she was gone, Zet pushed a button on his spacesuit and disappeared. The astral room faded away, and the hero found himself back on the Lord's bed. He thanked the alien in his mind, and went on down the castle's hallways. <laughs> yeah, you don't get to work your wiles on me, succubus. The adventurer entered a dark room. In the corner, there was a man in black armor sitting on a chair. The room didn't have any more doors. In the other corner, he noticed a glowing magical portal. This must be the portal room. Makes sense. Who are you? asked the hero. I'm Sylvester. I am the Knight of the Temple of Fate. It is my job to protect the portal from necromancers, said the man. Oh, I was just looking for them. And for the treasury. Will you let me through? asked the adventurer. Only you can choose your path. How did you prove yourself? Who did you help? Did you kill a lot? Or maybe you have a yellow streak down your back. I can read you like a book, you know. This room will lead you to your destiny. Prepare yourself and enter the portal, said the knight. And that's all we got, so I guess we enter the portal. The hero entered the glowing portal, and the reality warped around him. When the adventurer opened his eyes again, he found himself in a small room with a window. This must be one of the castle towers. What kind of trial is that? The hero wondered. Then he heard the knight of the Temple of Fate. You are a brave and kind-hearted warrior. You have helped many in this castle, and even spared some in the battle. So in the trial you deserve, you will have to face the astral demon that lives in this tower and keeps a kidnapped princess as his prisoner. If you defeat the demon, you will bask in glory for years to come, said the knight. All right. The next moment, the skies opened, and the astral demon with a flaming sword entered the room through the space rift. Should the hero attack the demon or talk? Let's try to reason with him. Now listen, you freak. I don't want to hurt you. Leave now and I'll spare you But the hero broke off. As soon as the astral demon cast his spell, the hero was thrown into the air and then hurled back to the ground. His bones cracked and his heart stopped. Okay, talk is not the way to deal with the demon. Oh, not pause. Okay, go back. <gasps> oh no! Ow, crap! I hit the wrong button! Okay, I meant to hit the, the full screen one. I wanted to see the picture where I was dead. Um, all right, well, attack him. The adventurer rushed into the attack, but some mysterious force lifted him up in the air. It was the work of the astral demon and his magic power. As the demon was getting closer and closer, the hero had to decide what to do next. Throw his sword at the monster, or wait till he's near? Well, last time, like, waiting seemed to be the way to go. 
And maybe I should do that again, but I'm kind of worried if he's got me suspended like this. What if he just slams me against the wall or something? Take a chance. Throw the sword. Crap. The hero threw his sword at the demon, but he saw it coming and spewed out flames, melting the sword and burning the adventurer alive. Bomber. Okay. Oh, but I have three hearts, so. No, I don't. I'm dead. Aww. I was a hero, but I failed to save the princess. So if I continue, it's just going to start again, right? Yep. Well, all right then. Let's do it. Through the gates. And this time, I mean, we could do the same thing and try to beat the demon. I kind of want to beat the demon. Let's beat the demon. We know what to do now, so let's look at the bones. We don't really need the bone that we took, but, you know. Okay, so attack this thing. Make a dive. Give him the kick. And spear him. Okay, we can rush through these. Talk to you. And give him his ring. I love his happy face here. My ring! Okay, then we went to the right. And even though it's tempting to do things differently, I want to see what happens if I can successfully make it past the demon, you know? So, check out the cocoons. Rescue this fella. We'll go to Hans. Take me to the alien. Talk to him. We'll totally help him out. Do I deviate? No. We'll do it exactly the same. It's really tempting to choose other options, but then we might not get to the same ending and... Okay. I kind of love this. We just call in an alien and immediately he blasts the succubus. Bam! Alright. Into the portal? Let's do it. So, we want to attack him. And we do not want to throw our sword. It's a terrible idea. The adventurer waited patiently for the astral demon to come closer, and when he did, the hero plunged his sword into the demon and crushed his skull with the sword breaker to make sure he was dead. The astral demon started to vanish in the air, the spell was lifted, and the hero tumbled down on the floor. The adventurer gathered his strength and entered the second room in the tower. Inside, he saw an iron door with a huge padlock. Behind the door, he heard someone crying. Should the adventurer knock it down with his sword or pick it with a nail? Well, let's try to open it with a nail, right? What if it's a trap, thought the hero, and picked up a nail. A couple of minutes later, he managed to open the door. He entered a tiny room and saw a gorgeous girl in a magnificent dress lying on a bed. She stopped crying and looked at the adventurer. Who are you? What do you need? She asked cautiously. I've come for you. There's no time expl to explain. Come on, I have to take you to a safe place, said the adventurer. But I can't leave the room. The Lord of Necromancers will find me anyway, she said. Right, then I'll go and slit this old perv's throat and come back, said the adventurer, and headed for the exit. Wait, let, you, let me give you my blessing, or you won't sustain the necromancer's curse. By the way, I'm Princess Anastasius, she said. Should the adventurer agree? Well, yeah, don't we want to have the princess's blessing? Let's do it. Sure, it won't hurt me, said the adventurer. Anastasia whispered something, waved her hands, and then gave him a kiss on the cheek. Come on now. There we go. That was just a preview, she said, blushing. The hero climbed down the spiral stairs and entered the throne room. I thought the astral demon was going to be the last fight, but no. The necromancer was standing in the middle. I see you've prepared well. My spell had no effect on you, the lord said in surprise. Ah, it was her kiss. 
Yes, I know what you're up to, said the adventurer. All right, you must have met my captive, beautiful Anastasia. Do you like her? She's going to be my wife soon, and together we will have such power you can't even imagine, said the necromancer. Yeah, she's good. Too good to be yours, I'd say. So I'll keep her to myself instead. As for you, take this, the hero cried angrily and attacked the warlock. Meanwhile, the necromancer cast a spell. Should the adventurer rush to the lord or throw his sword at him? Throwing the sword is, seems to never be a good idea, but neither does running up to him. Throw the sword. <laughs> Every time. By the time the adventurer threw his weapon, the necromancer had finished with the spell, freezing the sword in the air. The next moment it turned around and, with a slight push from the lord, whooshed back to the hero. The sword was so fast he didn't even realize how it all happened. Death is always a sad outcome, but death from your own sword makes it pathetic. Especially when you've died multiple times already from trying to throw your sword. I need to stop throwing the sword. Okay, let's fight this guy again, and this time we will run up to him. The adventurer decided not to waste time and went for the lord. The necromancer saw it coming and sent a lightning bolt at him, but the hero had a narrow escape from the charge. Now he was ready to attack the warlock with the sword breaker. Should he thrust at him from the top or knock the lord down? Um, tackle him. The adventurer decided to tackle the necromancer, which took him by complete surprise. The warlock fell on his back, hitting his head against the floor. However, that didn't stop him for long, and they struggled on. The lord raised his black dagger, aiming at the hero's chest, but the adventurer grabbed his wrist just in time. Should he turn the dagger around, or hit the warlock with his knee? Um... Get him with your knee. Nope. The adventurer decided to hit the old necromancer with his knee, but loosened his grip for a second, and the warlock plunged his dagger into the hero's heart. Dang it. He started to choke on his own blood, staring at the ceiling, while the necromancer was watching him from above. <laughs> These guys look so sad. Oh no, the hero has died. They're bad guys too, though, right? Alright. Only one heart. Don't bungle it again. Okay, turn the dagger. The adventurer braced himself for the fight and began twisting the necromancer's wrists. He finally managed to turn the dagger around, grab the handle, and stab the warlock in the heart. The strength left the necromancer, and his heart stopped. The adventurer threw the dead body off himself and went for the exit. That's when he thought about the treasury, but then remembered Princess Anastasia. Was it really the diamond he was looking for in the castle? Why would he need a huge gem anyway? The hero opened the door to the tower and saw Anastasia. There was no need to explain. She looked him in the eye and threw herself into his arms, kissing him. The brave adventurer realized no treasure in the world was worth more than true love. He took the princess and led her out the same way he came to the tower. Through the sewer and everything? But we didn't die! We got a happy end! This is how the story ends for the brave adventurer. The hero brought Princess Anastasia home and married her. Alright! And how do I continue? There we go. They had a splendid wedding, and the whole city was invited at the feast. The townsmen celebrated their new prince, glorifying his deeds for centuries to come. Uh, it looks an awful lot like we're getting crowned. Well, she was a princess, right? So do we get to be prince? So we got true love, we got a heroic legacy, and we get to be royalty anyhow. As for the sword breaker, he was absolutely happy he had found his true treasure after all. We can't complain about that ending. Things are good. All right, we'll go ahead and let the credits roll. Everyone here worked hard on the game. You got, you know, you got to give credit where it's due. This is quite fun. Um, I'm gonna keep playing it since obviously we've only unlocked just a couple of our. Op There's so many, so many different choices. We've got to see how it goes, how else it can go. So we got a really good heroic end. Maybe next time I'll try being a coward. I love these little cats here. Do cats. And we should try being kind of just straight out sort of nasty and evil too. To see what kind of different ends we get. Ah! 
You found your own path to treasures of the castle. So we got 53 scenes out of 324. So you, we've got a lot more scenes to open up. Only 9 out of 124 death scenes. And we were the hero. Alright, awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wind the episode down here. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Come back and next time... We're st it still seems... I think I'm just going to choose kind of at whim. Still, whatever sounds good at the time, but make choices I haven't made before. Before I really start focusing on maybe necessarily being the coward or whatever else. We've got so many options still. <laughs>